What I'd like to do is uh, point out uh, these molds, which are made out of uh, steel. And from these molds, you can make these three different size blocks. And by the way, this is a tamping tool for tamping down the concrete uh, after you pour it into the mold. Uh, this wall, I call it a louver wall because it does look like they're, they're louvers. And also the side view is a trapezoidal shape, uh, which means that uh, both sides of the wall look the same. So it could be a freestanding wall, and if it is, you'll see the same view as this on the opposite side. And uh, perhaps we can take a side shot of this showing the trapezoidal shape uh, of the wall. And uh, the top piece is this mold, the blocks themselves is this mold, and the half block is this mold here. So these three pieces. And as I said, this is a tamping tool for tamping down the, uh, the slurry once it's in the mold. Uh, one thing that I think is different about these molds is the fact that you can, uh, as soon as you fill the mold and you tamp it down, then you, there is no waiting period to demold it. As soon as you tamp it down and squeeze the top of it nice and even, you can simply just lift the mold up and the concrete mix will stay in the same shape. And of course, what's most important here is the amount of water you put in. If you put too much water in, it's going to be like, uh, well, I guess the best way to describe it, it's really child's play. If you remember when you were a child, you were down by the beach, and if you had a Dixie cup or a pail, you could make these uh, mud pies. Uh, and if you put too much if the soil was too wet, if the sand was too wet, the thing would fall apart. If it's too dry, it will also fall apart. So you found a happy mix, you got moist sand, and you put it in the Dixie cup and flip it over, and there you go. It would stay and maintain its shape. Well, the same thing with these. After you fill the, fill the mold up, and you screen it, you'll be able to very gingerly lift the mold up because there are draft angles on it so it doesn't catch. And then you can move on to the second one. So later on, uh, I will show you how after we mix the slurry, uh, we will actually do that. So. There's no need for you to pour one block and then wait until tomorrow for it to harden because there's no need of that. After you pour one, you simply remove the mold and go on to the second one. Pour that one, move on to the third one. So theoretically, you can, you can mold 30 or 40 blocks a day if you so, so choose uh, because you, there is no waiting period. The only waiting period is for the cement to harden and that, of course, uh, should usually be overnight or eight, at least eight hours. So that's basically it. It's a, it's a method of making blocks uh, more rapidly and just using the same mold rather than have 10 or 20 molds and pour them all at once and let them harden overnight. You simply use one mold and just move it from place to place as soon as you uh, fill up the, uh, the cavity in the mold. Uh, so I think what we'll do now, this is just an overview. And here again, these are the three molds, for the three different shapes. This is the tamping tool. And these blocks are three and a half inches high, thick. I'll take a little. Uh, let's see, well, that's it. So I think what we'll do now is uh, mix, the, mix, mix the concrete mix and uh, pour some uh, blocks. This is an end view of the uh, city wall or it could be a border wall. It shows a trapezoidal shape on the, on the end, and also that the, it's a double face wall which shows the same shape on both sides. So it could be freestanding and you'll get the same view from either side. And it could be as long as you want it. This height happens to be a, a fairly comfortable sitting height. We just made a batch of uh, cement, Portland cement and sand, and Usually the mix is uh, one part Portland cement to two parts sand. Many people like to use one part Portland cement and three parts sand, so it's really up to the uh, user. Now, the reason I'm doing this, I'm trying to feel the best way to test it for the, for 
for the uh, moisture content and just pick it up in your hand to see it does not fall apart. If it was very watery, the whole thing will all just drip off. So the important thing is you want to maintain its shape when you open your hand. That's just a rough estimate. That's actually how you measure the slump when you're pouring something. Okay, now what we're going to do is uh, fill the mold up, tamp it down with the tamper, and screed it. And then we, you'll see that we can simply lift the mold up, even though it's wet, it will not fall apart. And you can move on to the second one with no waiting period. The waiting period is, that, is when it's curing overnight, but you don't, that does not hold you up in pouring as many as you want. So we could have 10, we could have 10 uh, pieces in a row here and pour them all within 10 or 15 minutes if you have enough uh, cement mix. Okay, now we're going to fill the mold and we'll show you how, because of the draft angles, the mold will lift, simply lift out like you did when you were a child out at the beach. See the mold has been removed, and the the block is maintaining its shape. Now I want to move on to the next block. So there's no there's no waiting time. It's, it's true that it's curing, but we don't have to worry about the curing time because it'll harden when the, when if we choose to uh, use it. it. Could be tomorrow. Could be eight hours later. The important thing is we now can make another another mold within. You know, one or two minutes of that one being uh, demolded. Right now we're filling up the second mold to 
show you that uh, in a very short time we'll have two molds ready to melt. And then we just keep repeating the thing by removing this mold and we'll have a second block. You can see he's tamping it down now. We're just screwing the top to make it level. Now we're going to be carefully to de carefully demold it. They, they have two molds, uh, excuse me, two blocks which we've made and probably within three or four minutes of each other. So as I say, you can keep going and going and going and going. And then when they're hardened, whether it be eight hours or tomorrow more, or the next day, you'll have all these four cotton and ready to start assembling your wall. Uh, you probably want to bury half the block so it doesn't shift on you. And... Uh, that's about it. I think, I think we've covered everything. The main feature of this is the fact that you can keep making the molds one after the other, making the blocks one after the other without any waiting time. Here again, that total lapse time on, on those two was probably, I don't know, maybe three or four minutes, I'd say, at the most. Camping device has a uh, secondary use for determining the centering of the of the blocks. This, this is like the spacer. Okay. That determines how much overhangs. That'll give you an equal overhang on both sides, so the wall looks exactly the same on both sides. Okay, what we're going to do now is uh, uh, we're using concrete, uh, concrete adhesive. We do not need mortar or cement or mortar mix of any kind. All we're going to do now is use concrete adhesive, which is its main purpose is to use on, on uh, walls and, uh, such as this. I'm just going to put a bead on it. That that's centered on there with concrete adhesive. And this whole wall was built with that same uh, concrete adhesive. We're selling your uh, <clears throat> do it yourself uh, outlets, hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, and so etc.